What's going on everyone? D1D here, back with another Pokemon challenge video for ya. Hitmonchan did pretty well, so I thought I'd try my hand at another. And this is a brutal one. Beating Pokemon Blue using only the Pokemon that the gym leader, Bugsy, in Johto uses. Now, for anyone who's unfamiliar, in the game, Bugsy uses a Kakuna, Metapod, and Scyther. I believe in the anime, Kakuna is replaced with Spinarak, but since we don't have Spinarak in this game, we have to make do. And if you look at the stats of each of these Pokemon, Metapod and Kakuna are essentially useless. Where Scyther, it has a great attack and speed stat, but its move pull is just god awful. I mean, we're gonna have to use Bide when we get to the Pokemon Tower. And on the final move set, I I see that we're gonna have to use Mimic. Slash might make it, might not. But we'll see when we get there. Anyway, the battle against the first rival here is pretty easy. I replace uh, Bulbasaur with Scyther so that Charmander is chosen by the rival, making it the absolute hardest. And... Charmander is no match for our quick attacks. But the first gym is the Rock Gym, which is going to be brutal to train for. So let's talk about Scyther a little bit more. I mentioned Move Pull. As you'll see here, the best attack we're going to get is Slash. With Scyther's base speed, Slash will crit 100% of the time. It's unfortunate that we don't get access to Wing Attack, in red and blue, that's only in yellow, which would have, uh, which would make ghost types a hell of a lot easier. And as far as the TM side of things, all normal moves, with the exception of toxic and rest. So we're we're gonna be we're gonna have to come up with some really good strategies aside from just trying to brute force everything, which, for the most part. I see us being able to brute force with Slash, but as we get to the tougher trainers like the rival battles and Elite Four, we're going to have to do more than just rely on Slash and critical hits. Now I do do myself a bit of a favor here, and it's that I catch a Caterpie and Weedle and evolve them into Metapod and Kakuna, so that way I have at least Tackle and Poison Sting, as opposed to just Harden it. Wow, I said way, like, weird there, but hey, who who cares? But I decided to fight Rival 1A, as he's called by J-Rose, just to, for the extra experience. They send out Pidgey, I get a Sand Attack, but still hit with Quick Attack. Gust, that's okay, and Quick Attack doesn't knock it out just yet, but the next one does. That's pretty good uh, luck with one Sand Attack. We grow a level, I forget to uh, change my settings, which I eventually do in this run. I decide to send out Kakuna for some switch tra training, I get a lucky uh, poison. I'm thinking to myself, if Charmander just uses Ember, it could probably knock me out, but funny enough, Charmander learns Ember at level 9, I thought it would have already had Ember by now. So without Ember, Charmander really can't do much against us, and... This battle really isn't anything, and it's the grinding Viridian Forest that's about to be the tough part of the run as we train for Brock. I opt to try Brock with Scyther at level 14, and one thing I didn't know here is that in Gen 1, if an attack does zero, it'll just show attack missed, and that's what happens with Kakuna here. I was hoping I could get a couple lucky poisons with it on Geodude, but... That's not happening. Metapod, as you see, is essentially useless. They, Metapod and Kakuna are, will essentially be meat shields in this run. So I go to Scyther, and I decide, you know what? I'm going to reset and level up some. Come back to Brock at level 17, because now Scyther has Leer, which I can use to lower Geodude's defense. Hope it doesn't use too many defense curls. And then Quick Attack should be able to knock it out. Even when I'm not getting, you know, critical hits, which I have terrible critical hit luck until we get Slash, which you'll see. But a few Leers, Quick Attack, 
leer. I use another leer just for good measure. And another. And another. And another. And alright. I, I don't know what past me was doing, but... Finally, I go for quick attack, knock it out. Now, Onyx! I want to set up six leers against it. Hope it doesn't use too many screeches or tackles against me. So that I'm able to knock it out with Scyther. And if the off chance... Off chance... Scyther gets knocked out. I can switch to Metapod, and hopefully its tackles are strong enough to where it could knock it out. But Metapod, even with all those uh, leers set up, isn't doing much. I switch out to Metapod just to get some string shots on it. Um, just because. And I see what Metapod can do with its tackle, which really is nothing, even with all those uh, set up. I mean... We know Metapod and Kakuna stats are terrible. But I'm persistent. I want to try just because I want to get these meat shields leveled up some. Metapod gets knocked out. I go back to Scyther. Quick Attack is doing a lot of damage now, and now Onyx keeps setting up Bide. So I need to wait for the Bides to pass. Tackle. That's good. All the screeches it used before are now gone. And we finally defeat Brock, and we get the TM for Bide which we will need in the- By the way, I feel like I should fit this in there, but I took the Dome Fossil. Who takes the Helix Fossil anyway? Why would you want to do that? So in Cerulean, I've got two choices. Fight Misty, or take on the Rival in Nugget Bridge. And I opt for the Rival in Nugget Bridge just because I feel like Misty would probably beat me right now. So, Rival Fight it is, Pidgeotto comes out, Quick Attack gets a nice critical hit, we get Sand Attack, but get another critical hit. And we level. Abra comes out. I decide to switch to Metapod just for some switch training, and I just... At this point in the run, I had, you know, a sliver of hope that Metapod or Kakuna would, you know, do something in this run and maybe clutch out a win against, like, a real tough Pokemon, but I, I'm pretty sure this is the most you see out of Metapod. Rattata comes out, Hyper Fang, I decide to just leave Metapod in, be the meat shield, get knocked out. Rattata's taking its time doing it, but there's the Hyper Fang that ultimately does it. I send Scyther back out, Quick Attack, knocks it out, and Charmander, as long as it doesn't use Ember, we're good, and it doesn't, and that is the battle. Oh, didn't knock it out. Now it's the battle against the second rival. And after training up on Nugget Bridge, Misty's next, and she's kind of a cakewalk. I send out Metapod just because I was trying to do some switch training, and I probably should have just made this the one-man Scyther show from the beginning once I got Metapod and Kakuna, but... Two quick attacks knock out Staryu really quickly. I go for Leer on Starmie. It goes for Bubble Beam. A crit of that will probably knock me out. Misty goes for X Defend. I get a nice critical hit. Water Gun doesn't knock me out, and Quick Attack knocks out Starmie, and yeah, that's the battle. I decided to do some training east of Vermilion, because we're really close to getting Slash on Scyther, which is going to be its best move, and honestly make it to the final moveset. And as you see with the rival battle on the SSN, Slash is a critical hit one-shot, on every Pokemon. Pidgeotto, Raticate, Kadabra, bad defense, so I know it will one-shot that. And the Charmeleon, slash, one-shot. Easy. And the same can be said of Lieutenant Surge's team. Voltorb comes out, and each one of them is a one-shot with Slash. Critical hit, we level, which is great. Pikachu, critical hit. Raichu, I'm not sure if it's going to one-shot, and a Thunderbolt would be bad, but it's a critical hit. We're now coming up into one of two parts I hate about this run. Rock Tunnel and Pokemon Tower. Rock Tunnel because there's this mandatory hiker that, you know, we all have to face that has the two Geodudes and the Graveler who like to self-destruct. And as you see, I don't have very much health. 
This took me a couple attempts, but I got a run where they either miss their attacks or use Defense Curl, and Slash with its critical hit ratio bypasses that. And then I can make my way to the Pokemon Tower rival, and it's essentially the same as the other rival battle, which is Slash, One Shot Knockout, and I learn Sword Stance here, which I'll get rid of Double Team for, which I never use Double Team in this run because even though Scyther learns it by level up, I feel like it gives me an unfair advantage. But I want Sword Stance for the badge boost that we'll eventually need, and Slash one-shots the rival's entire team once again. So at this point in the run, we have a few options. We could fight Erica, or do the Rocket Game Corner. I pick up Swift because I feel like I'm going to need it. I never end up using it, spoiler. And I opt to fight Giovanni. Onyx comes out, and Slash, critical hit, does about half. Okay, I'll take that. Second one doesn't knock it out. I get a rock throw. That didn't do as much as I thought it would. Onyx does have terrible attack. But Rhyhorn comes out, horn attack, and that's all it can hit me with this horn attack, but I knock it out in two hits. Kangaskhan, Slash, doesn't one-shot, but Giovanni guard specs, and he's a two-shot. Now it's time for my least favorite part of the run, Pokemon Tower. Teach Scyther Bide and get rid of Quick Attack. And I'm going to show you a successful battle here. And if I had the luck in this battle that, um, in this battle, then the rest of the battles would have went really well here. But I get a lick that doesn't paralyze, a nightshade, and then bite unleashes. But this next battle is how majority of them went. Ghastly comes out. I use bide. Lick, and I'm immediately paralyzed, Confuse Ray, I hit myself, I hit myself, Nightshade, still confused and hit myself, uses Lick again, I'm no longer confused but I have to reset Bide, confuses me again, Lick, not confused but fully paralyzed, and yeah, I think you see where this is going. I actually had to reset quite a bit there. But I decide to take on Rival Fievel next. And he actually beat me in this first battle. He sends out Pidgeot, and I was switch training in Silphco, so that's why you see Metapod up front. I forgot to put uh, Scyther to the front, but it's able to get off a wing attack on me. Slash isn't a one hit anyway, so it being, being able to get the two hits, I probably could have saved that. Execute comes out. Slash is not a one hit, and Poison Powder puts us now on a timer. I use another Slash to finish it, and we level up in the middle of that. Gyarados comes out, I miss with Slash, Gen 1 miss, thank you, Dragon Rage. Another Slash, hurt by Poison, and another Dragon Rage leaves us on two health, so if we don't one shot the rest of his Pokemon, we die to poison damage. Alakazam is a one shot. Charizard comes out, not a one-shot, and Scyther goes down to Poison. I send out Kakuna, hoping for the rival to get a 1 in 256 miss, and I can maybe poison it, but I get no luck. Charizard is easily able to take out Kakuna and Metapod, and I try again, because if I can just get through the bad luck there, no, no 256 chance miss, not getting poisoned by Execute, I think we can beat him. So, I correct my mistake, put Scyther up front, Pidgeot goes for Wing Attack, doesn't do that much, and we level up. Execute comes out next, a Slash, still not a one hit, Poison Powder again, so we are on a timer again. I would have preferred it to use uh, Failed Hypnosis, but Slash, Hurt by Poison, Dragon Rage, not what I want to see. But we knock out Gyarados. Alakazam, I know, is a one-shot. And then it's just a matter of what will Charizard use. Anything but Ember, and we win. And we get Ember, but it doesn't one-shot us. So we're able to move on. And that was Rival Fievel. And Giovanni, 
isn't much, too much trouble. Scyther slash Nidorito is knocked out in one hit. Kangaskhan slash it hangs on but barely. Tail Whip would have gave me a little bit of badge boost. Rhyhorn is the problem here just because Slash not doing very effective damage makes it a three hit and it has time to attack me back. And last is Nidoqueen after we level up and Slash doesn't one shot. We get a Poison Sting, doesn't do a lot, also poisons me but doesn't matter. We knock out Nidoqueen and I decide to take on Sabrina after this. Now, all of her Pokemon should be one-shots with Slash. Kadabra, one-shot. Mr. Mime, one-shot. Venomoth is a one-shot. And Alakazam, after we level up, should also be a one-shot, and it is. I opt for Koga next just because we really, well, I feel like Toxic at this point in the run is going to be really useful. End up not putting it on my moveset until the Elite Four, but the coughing is a one hit. Muck, able to hang on. Kogi uses X attack, and that's good. I didn't want to minimize and, you know, to get a bunch of misses. Coughing is also a one shot. Now the question is, will Weezing be? And nope. Weezing goes for Toxic, it misses, and we knock it out. That's the battle with Koga. And we take on Blaine next, and Blaine actually beats us the first time, and you'll see why. Growlithe, one shot with Slash. Ponyta, one shot with Slash. Rapidash I don't think will be a one shot, but it is. Arcanine comes out, I slash it, it hangs on, and critical hit Fire Blast. I go for Kakuna, hoping for some good luck, and yeah, it's just gonna ember it. So I try again. And I think, as long as we don't get a critical hit Fire Blast, we should be good. So, Growlithe, one shot. Ponyta, one shot. Not worried about any Pokemon until the Arcanine. Knowing that Rapidash is a one-shot now, too, is very good because I don't want to get stuck in Fire Spin. And Arcanine goes for Fire Blast. It hits, and we hang on with 48 health, get burned, but it doesn't matter. And that is the battle with Blaine. So now we can take on Giovanni at uh, the Viridian Gym. Except there's one problem. As you'll see here, I try to go in. I can't. And I pulled a J-Rose and forgot to battle Erica. So we're gonna do that real quick. And Erica is nothing at this point in the run. As you'll see, I battled some trainers in her gym, got poisoned, didn't even bother healing. But all of her Pokemon are one-shots with Slash. So, I mean, at this point in the run, Erica's nothing, but who knows how difficult she could or could not have been earlier. And now we can take on Giovanni which I have a bit of a strategy here. Essentially, I want to set up on the Rhyhorn some badge boosts, and then I'm going to mimic Dig from Dugtrio. So I set up two agility, Ry Rhyhorn gets a critical hit, Slash looks like it's going to be a three to four hit KO, Fury attack, that's fine. I miss with Slash, I hit with Slash, and it goes down, so three hit. Dugtrio comes out, the worst it can do to me is Slash, and I thought in this game Dugtrio had Earthquake, but that is in yellow version. A Slash one-shots it. Nidoqueen, I use Dig. One-shot. King comes out, I use Dig. One-shot. And Rhydon, oh, we level, so we lose our badge boost. I leer right on just to get its defense down some. I use an agility to badge boost. Dig. Right on goes for horn drill and one shot. That was actually surprising. I didn't think it would, and that's all eight gym leaders. So, we've got the last rival battle before the league. And this one is actually pretty tough because 
Charizard now knows Flamethrower, which could one-shot us, especially if it crits. Pidgeot comes out, gets a wing attack on me, but it goes down in two slashes. The rival's Rhyhorn comes out, and I have to imagine this will also be a three-hit KO, just like on Giovanni's, and I'm right. I go ahead and set up an agility for badge boost because when Gyarados comes out, I want to mimic Hydro Pump because I want to use that on Charizard and want to make sure that the badge boost is enough to where my special's high enough to knock it out. Slash is now a one hit KO on Execute, Gyarados, Mimic, make sure I click Hydro Pump and not Dragon Rage, Slash is a two hit, it leers me twice which is good for the badge boost. And then Alakazam comes out. I know it's going to be a one-shot. It is, and we level up. So, moment of truth. Do I one-shot Charizard? I'll never know because I get knocked out. Oh, nope, not knocked out just yet, and it's not a one-shot. So, Flamethrower does me in. I hope for some luck with Kakuna. I, I know I'm not getting it. So I try again. And I think we can do it as long as we don't get a miss with Hydro Pump. I level up just so that we don't level up in the middle of the battle to eliminate the badge boost. And Pidgeot's the same. Rhyhorn, same strategy. I'm going to use Slash. It goes for Stomp. Slash. And now that I know one more hit will knock it out, I'm going to set up badge boost with Agility. And it goes for a Horn Drill there, and Horn Drill can't hit me. If only it went for a horn drill every time. Execute comes out. Slash. One hit KO. And Gyarados. Mimic Hydro Pump once again. Leer. That'll help the badge boost. Slash. Critical hit. And it's knocked out once again. Alakazam. I know will be a one hit with Slash. And it is. Alright, moment of truth. Hydro Pump. And... Got it! And that's the final rival battle. Alright, so it's league time. And you're gonna see a series of battles against Lorelei here. Which, it took me a minute to get a strategy for her. At first, I just tried to brute force it with the uh, double edge. Toxic the dugong and hoping that it would go for rest. So that it wouldn't hit me with too many ice type attacks because... Both Dugong and Cloyster will just spam Aurora Beam. And that defeats us pretty quickly. And Cloyster with its high defense, yeah, we can't get the job done. So I think in the second battle, I'm going to mimic Rest. That way I can heal up whenever I my health gets too low. But Dugong first turn gets a critical hit. I use Rest. And this was pretty much what sealed my fate in this battle because I'm going to be asleep for two turns. I can't attack the turn I wake up and I'm KO'd. So I level up some and I still try to just brute force my way through it hoping to one shot the dugong with a double edge. It doesn't. You'll see that I had uh, gotten rid of slash just to try this. Cloyster comes out. I use toxic on it and Nothing seems to be working, and then I get an idea. And it's going to come into play in this fourth battle. What if I use Swords Dance to badge boost glitch to raise my special and mimic rest? So, I try it out. Dugong's Aurora Beam comes out. Critical hit, don't want to see that, but attack drop we actually do. Because that's more Swords Dance we can use. Therefore, boosting our other stats. And the more times we can use Swords Dance, the better. So Dugong's Aurora Beam now isn't really doing much. I use Rest to heal up. You'll see there, it did about 40 damage. Yeah, 40 damage. Um, so, I wake up, Aurora Beam really isn't doing anything. I Swords Dance just to keep giving myself the boost. Slash is not a two hit, or not a one hit, excuse me. Almost is. Lorelai uses the Retroactive Super Potion. I decide to rest just to heal back up because I don't want to go into Cloyster with too little of health. And another Slash takes down the Dugong. Cloyster comes out. 
Slash, I know, will not be a one hit. Aurora Beam really didn't do much. And Cloister's down. Now, Slowbro isn't a threat. I use Sword Stance to set up more badge boost on it. Another Sword Stance. And I know Slowbro I can also heal up against if need be, which I actually use for future battles against Lorelei, who isn't a consistent, you know, getting by with this strat. If Dugong Critical hits you with a Roar Beam turn one, it's usually over, and Lapras can get a Critical Hit Blizzard or Freeze. But in this battle, we get neither, and Lapras is a two-shot. You saw Jinx was a one-shot. I wasn't worried about Jinx at all, although if she wasn't a one-shot, Ice Punch could freeze. And next up is Bruno, which he's not really much of a challenge. Really with Bruno, it's just keep spamming Slash. You really don't want to see too many rock throws, and especially like a critical hit rock throw from Onyx, but that's your only worry. So Slash, looks like it's going to be a three hit on Onyx. Rock throw really doesn't do much there. And Rock Throw with, with its bad accuracy misses, so one Pokemon down. Hitmonchan I was worried about in case Slash didn't one hit it. I didn't want to see counter, but it does. Hitmonlee is a one shot. Onyx number two comes out. Slash. Looks like this is also going to be a three hit KO. Bruno uses X Defend, and that's okay because critical hits, bypass, and it uses Rage. So all we have left is Machamp, and the question is, will Slash one-shot? It does not, but it goes for Fissure, which can affect me and can't hit me either because I'm part flying. We level up at the end of the battle, which is good, because for Agatha, we are really going to need some badge boost. Because of her Pokemon's high special, I was nervous for this battle, and I knew we were going to need some luck. Gengar number one comes out, and I'm going to mimic Nightshade. And at my level, Nightshade should be a two-hit KO on all of her Pokemon. The only one I was worried about was the level 60 Gengar. Golbat, Slash, and it's nothing. Haunter comes out. I accidentally used Slash, because I just was just hitting A, and it gets a free Nightshade on me, and a second Nightshade. So, that's not good. Arbok comes out. I make sure to switch to Slash for this. Arbok goes down. And Gengar number 2 comes out. And I notice something. I didn't heal up my PPs. And it hangs on from the second Nightshade. So, I had a slim hope here. I hit it with two Leers. I'm hoping that, you know, it goes for Toxic on Kakuna. And it doesn't affect it. But Ag Agatha goes for the Super Potion. And that pretty much kills any chances of Kakuna pulling off some major upset or being relevant in this battle of some sort. So, I reset, I make it back to Agatha, and I make sure to heal my PPs this time. I actually leveled up some and went around the world map and actually found some hidden items to restore PP that I don't normally get. Which, I also normally don't do these challenges, so had to learn about them. But it's the same strat. Mimic Nightshade, two of them takes out the first Gengar. Slash is a one-shot on Golbat. Haunter manages to confuse me, and I hit myself, and I get a little worried here because if I don't get good enough luck, then two Nightshades from Haunter could KO me. It doesn't. Arbok is a one-shot. Gengar number two comes out. I go for Nightshade. That's definitely a two-hit this time. I hit myself. It hits me with Nightshade, and we get through the confusion, so we are moving on. Had I hit myself, then that would have been really bad. But, we're moving on. We're going to Lance for the first time. This is probably attempt number 5 or 6 with Scyther that I recorded. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, we had quite a bit of battles with Lorelei were of Dugong crits, it's just a reset. And, I mean, that happened pretty often. I don't really remember how many times, but we didn't need that footage in here anyway, so out comes Gyarados with Lance, and I'm going to use Sword Stance to badge boost, 
and Mimic Hydro Pump. Because I want Hydro Pump for the Aerodactyl later on. Slash is not a two hit against Gyarados. It goes for Hyper Beam. Does decent damage, but the second Slash takes it out. The two Dragonairs aren't, you know, any threats. Slash and we level. Great. So I use a Sword Stance against the second Dragonair just to boost my special a little bit more. And then I one-shot it with Slash. Aerodactyl comes out. It doesn't have great special, but neither does Scyther. But Hydro Pump one-shots it anyway. Dragonite, Slash. It goes for Slam. So we went. We missed. And we lost. Great. Ah, it took me a few attempts to get back to Lance, but it was essentially the same strategy. Sword Stance to Badge Boost Glitch. Gyarados goes for Dragon Rage. Mimic the Hydro Pump. It goes for Hydro Pump. Does decent damage. I'm already down 100 health. Lance goes for the Hyper Potion. And... Okay, Hydro Pump. I didn't want to see that. I'm going into this battle with... The rest of this battle with less than 100 HP. Dragonair number one. One shot. Dragonair number two. One shot. And the Aerodactyl. Hydro Pump. And it's a one shot still. Dragonite comes out. We level after Aerodactyl. So I really don't want to see a Hyper Beam. Especially a critical hit Hyper Beam. It goes for Barrier and essentially gives me the battle. So we make it to the champion for the first time. And you're going to see after this battle that I... I actually opt to teach Scyther Toxic because we're going to need it against Rhydon due to its high defense just because I don't want Rhydon to be able to retaliate too much and I also thought to myself it might be useful against Executor. And one thing I need to make sure I do in this next battle is mimic Hydro Pump off Gyarados because we're going to need it for Charizard because Flamethrower, even though we're 12 levels higher or whatever we are, can one-shot us, especially if it critical hits. So here we go, champion battle. Pidgeot comes out. I go ahead, you slash. Not a one-shot, Pidgeot goes for wing attack. Doesn't do much, slash knocks it out. Next is Alakazam. I know slash will be a one-shot, and it is. And now, right on. So we pop a Toxic off on it. It misses with Fury Attack. I use Sword Stance just to set up some badge boosts. Fury Attack hits. Two turn Fury Attack, so that's good. Another badge boost, it goes for Leer. Lowering our defense, but boosting our other stats. And I go for one final Sword Stance just to finish this off. It goes for another Fury Attack. A three hit one, okay. And Slash just doesn't knock it out, but it misses with Fury Attack, and Toxic finishes it. Next, next is Executor. Slash, not a one-shot. It goes for Barrage. That's not doing much. A two-turn Barrage, so I got some great luck there. And here is Gyarados. We need Hydro Pump. That's the attack we're going to use to finish Charizard. Hyper Beam... Okay, that did decent damage, even though it wasn't a crit. I feel like a crit would have knocked us out. There's Gyarados, and moment of truth. We hit, and we knock it out. So, we are the champion. Congratulations, Bugsy. You were able to defeat the Kanto Gym Leaders with your terrible, terrible team. Challenge was really brutal. I gotta say, I did get the idea, partly from Madrybred and J-Rose. I know J-Rose did a video uh, a year or two back about beating, I believe it was Pokemon Yellow with Bruno's team. And I know Madrybred has done a couple videos where he's beaten it with uh, Giovanni's team, the Rivals team. So I thought it was a nice little challenge. It was definitely a brutal run. Honestly, I probably could have renamed this to Scyther Solo Run Featuring Friends. But, Bugsy did it. Spiro makes it into the Hall of Fame just because I forgot to deposit it back into my box. 
And with all that sped up game time, yeah, almost 43 hours. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, I want to do these challenges once a month, and I'm not sure what to do for my next one. I thought about doing Hitmon Lee just to go with Hitmon Chan, or uh, even a Hitmon Top video for Fire Red. I actually started streaming that on my Twitch channel, which you can uh, find a link for that on my channel. But uh, if you have any suggestions on runs you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Join my Discord and let me know. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.